Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're taking a look at pre-performance nutrition and hydration. We'll start off by defining the aim of pre-performance nutrition and hydration. Then we'll have a look at strategies for optimal performance. All of the things that should be on an athlete's plate before a competition. We'll finish this lesson off with a few further considerations and we'll be done. Let's jump straight into it. Pre-performance nutrition aims to fuel the body, to provide adequate energy and optimal hydration for the performance ahead. Before we move on, it's important to recognize that what's considered adequate energy and optimal hydration differs for each athlete depending on their sport. Endurance events like cycling require different types and amounts of nutrients than power and strength events like shot put. For these lessons, we're going to focus on nutrition and hydration for endurance events because there are more requirements and strategies to know, but we'll still discuss the non-endurance events along the way. With that in mind, let's have a look at our pre-performance strategies. To make it simple, let's develop a bit of a meal plan for an endurance athlete. On the day of an event, athletes should have a meal three hours before the event, consisting predominantly of complex carbohydrates, such as whole grain pasta. As we know, carbs are rich with glycogen, which provide plenty of energy for movement. Complex carbohydrates are particularly important because they release energy slowly and over a long period of time, ensuring an athlete has a continual energy supply. You'll remember from the last lesson that it's important to consider the glycemic index and consume foods that have a lower GI. With this time frame, Athletes don't want to consume carbohydrates that will be absorbed as glucose too quickly. We want to give the body adequate time to digest the carbohydrates at the right time for optimal performance. One to three hours out, athletes should avoid large meals and just stick with snacks, such as a banana. As we just saw, the body needs adequate time to digest nutrients, so the energy can be used for the upcoming performance. So we don't want to be eating any large meals. Then, an hour out, athletes should only consume simple carbohydrates, such as jelly beans. This is because simple carbs release energy rapidly and in a short period of time, allowing the energy to be used for the upcoming activity. With our nutrition done, let's have a look at hydration. 24 hours before an event, athletes should start to increase their fluid intake. For high intensity endurance events, Athletes lose nearly 1,000 milliliters of fluid per hour of activity. Drinking plenty of water the day before will prevent dehydration. Two to three hours out, sports dietitians recommend that athletes consume about 500 milliliters of water and about 200 milliliters in the 15 minutes before the performance. Remember, these recommendations are for endurance athletes. For strength and power-based athletes, protein intake is a big focus. Athletes need to ensure proteins are on their plate for all meals and take in protein at certain times to maximize muscle growth. Within an hour of working out, for example, power athletes will want to consume protein to recover and repair damage from their exercise. Because protein takes a long time to process, the focus isn't so much on the day of the event, but rather regular protein consumption. With that covered, we need to take a look at a few other considerations. Firstly, it's important that athletes maintain a balanced diet well before a competition. Like we talked about in the last lesson, athletes need to get the right amount of macro and micronutrients throughout the training season. Then, athletes should only consume easily digestible foods. We want to stay away from carbs that are too fiber dense or starch heavy and avoid proteins and fats. They take too long to digest, which may lead to indigestion or discomfort. Athletes should also consume foods they're familiar with. Eating something they've never tried before might cause further discomfort. It's best to avoid this risk by sticking to what you know. On the topic of sore stomachs, athletes should also avoid eating immediately before an event. Our food needs time to digest, so eating just before a performance is a pretty bad idea. Finally, we need to recognize that the longer a performance is, the more energy that's required, so the more carbs and fluids that need to be consumed. For events that exceed 90 minutes, a technique called carbohydrate loading can be utilized. 
This involves loading the muscles with glycogen in the days before an event, consuming 7 to 12 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day. By tapering training and carb loading, the athlete is able to store more glycogen in the body and delay glycogen fatigue. This can improve performance by 2-3% to on the day, which can be the difference between first and second place. Alright everyone, those are our pre-performance considerations done. To summarise, pre-performance nutrition aims to provide adequate energy and hydration for the performance ahead. For endurance athletes, following a plan like this will ensure optimal performance on the day. Remember, power-based athletes need to focus on timing their protein intake, so they should consume protein in the hour after each workout to repair their muscles. Athletes should also follow these further considerations. Carbohydrate loading can be used for long-duration endurance events to store more glycogen and delay fatigue. And that's me done. Answer a few quiz questions and I'll see you all in the next lesson.